Hey folks, Casey here. Welcome back to the channel. This week's topic is Distributor Installation 101. While I know this may seem like a pretty basic subject, based on the last few vehicles I purchased, some of you need a refresher. I'm going to show you how to properly install a distributor. We're going to use a small block Chevy inside my 1964 Willis pickup truck, uh, but this applies to just about any domestic American V8 and probably most other engines as well. As always, I'd like to remind you all to like, comment, and subscribe. And without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I guess we should probably start at the beginning. This is a distributor. This is a vacuum advanced distributor. Notice the vacuum pot on the outside. It is also an electronic ignition distributor. Uh, this came installed in the 283 Chevy that's in my Willis pickup truck. I have no idea who makes it. There's no manufacturer details on it anywhere that I can see. But the basic parts of the distributor as follows. You've got your distributor body. You've got your cap underneath the cap. You've got your rotor. This rotor spins around and transfers spark through the center of the cap out to each of these posts to fire the individual cylinders. Inside the distributor, you've got your... Um, your timing device, be it an optical pickup, a magnetic pickup, points and condenser, uh, which are operated by a little cam that opens and closes points. Um, on the bottom of the distributor, you have your timing gear. Uh, this is gonna be present in just about everything, but like, you know, your, your Mopar Hemi engines and stuff like that, they actually use a gear that's on an intermediate shaft. Uh, at the bottom of that shaft, you've got an oil pump drive and that's what hangs a lot of people up when they go to install a distributor because you have to line up the oil pump drive. Anyway, that's that. That's the basic operating features. All right, folks. So on a small block Chevy engine, the number one cylinder is driver side front. And that's going off the spark plugs. So you always want to crank your motor over to top dead center as indicated by the timing mark on the harmonic balancer and the timing tab on the motor. But finding top dead center isn't quite that simple. Let me show you a common pitfall that trips up a lot of folks. All right, so we've got our mark lined up and the number one cylinder valves are both closed. So we're on top dead center on the firing stroke or compression stroke of this engine, correct? Incorrect. Those valves sure look closed, but on a small duration camshaft, you can actually have both valves closed at top dead center on the exhaust stroke. And in fact, the valves might not be completely closed, but this is a hydraulic flat tappet motor, and I know that the lifters are bled down a little bit, so that could have the valves appearing to be closed at top dead center on the exhaust stroke. Now, a lot of folks will tell you that what you need to do is you need to observe the exhaust valve closing as you approach top dead center, the intake valve opening to let you know that you're letting in your air fuel mixture, and then the intake valve closing again at bottom dead center or there, thereabouts, so that as the compression stroke starts, both valves are closed. Well, yeah, you can do that, but there's a much simpler way. With the number one cylinder spark plug removed, crank your motor over towards top dead center. Then take your thumb or your finger, doesn't matter which one, stick it in the hole, and you hear that? That escaping gas lets you know you're approaching top dead center on the compression stroke. All right, so tip number two. So I apologize that this is hard to see. On my balancer, you can see my timing mark right there. On my timing tab, that is zero. It's really hard to tell, but that slightly longer dash right here, maybe you can faintly see the zero there and each mark is one degree, uh, you know, which is hard enough to tell because that says A. It doesn't say five, it doesn't say four either, it says A. Who knows what the hell A means? I sure don't. But you can figure out the diameter of your balancer. Uh, pi R squared gives you the circumference, and then you can divide that by 360 degrees to find out what measurement equals a degree. And in my case, 10 degrees is about an inch. So I was able to determine that each of these marks is one degree. So rather than line my mark on my balancer up with zero to be at true top dead center, 
I've lined it up to be eight degrees before top dead center because if I drop my distributor in exactly lined up with the number one terminal at eight degrees before top dead center, then I have eight degrees of static timing. And when you're going to start an engine up uh, that's never been run before, you want to have a little bit of timing dialed in. You don't want to start it at zero. So this will make it much easier to fire up. All right, so now that we're eight degrees before top dead center, which is a nice generic number, spark plugs back in, our valve covers back on. We just put the rotor pointer at number one and drop her in there, right? Don't forget your distributor gasket. Drop her in, right? Just drop her right in. Why won't the distributor go all the way down? Well, that's because of that oil pump drive that I showed you guys in the beginning of the video. It's currently hung up on the oil pump drive shaft inside the motor. Let me show you a picture of what that looks like. All right, so that shiny bit there is the oil pump drive shaft and that slot in it has to engage with the tang in the bottom of the distributor in order for the distributor to slide all the way down. All right, so this is really the second pitfall that trips up a lot of people trying to install a distributor into a motor. Now, I don't know if it's laziness or just a lack of understanding, but what a lot of people will do in this situation is they will lift the distributor up and they'll rotate the rotor to the next tooth on the drive gear and they'll just keep doing that until they find a spot where the distributor will drop all the way down. And there it is right there. Eventually you'll find it, always, because now the timing gear and the oil pump drive shaft are lined up, everything goes home happy, except we're on TDC on number one, and our rotor's pointing back here. If you install your cap and you set up this terminal on your distributor cap as your number one cylinder, and then you base your firing order, 18436572, off of number one being right here, yes, the engine will run, it'll run fine. You can time it off of that. The problem is, is that your spark plug wire lengths are gonna be all screwed up. You always wanna install the distributor with the rotor pointing to the number one cylinder when it's on TDC on number one. And yes, the rotor won't point to all the rest of the cylinders based on this installation location. But, you know, typically, uh, you know, speaking from my own experience, 99% of motors out there, the number one terminal points to the number one cylinder. It makes it easier for anybody who works on the car in the future, and it makes your spark plug wires all fit like they should. So how do we get this distributor to drop in all the way with the rotor pointing to the number one cylinder? we have to turn the oil pump drive shaft, and it's not that hard. Now, I've already marked my distributor body where the rotor lines up naturally to the number one terminal when my vacuum pot is pointing towards the front of the motor. So what we can do is we can turn this over like this, and we can see what orientation our oil pump drive shaft needs to be in. Now on a Chevy, it's pretty straightforward. Just get yourself a big flat blade screwdriver. On a Ford, it's a hex drive. I believe it's a quarter inch hex drive, but I could be mistaken. They make a special tool for turning the oil pump drive shaft for the Fords. Um, if you use a socket, I like to go through with a little bit of tape and tape the socket to the extension because boy, the last thing you want to do is drop a socket into the engine. Use your cell phone to take a picture of the oil pump drive shaft location so you know about where it is and about how much it needs to turn. Then we just drop our screwdriver in and it takes a little bit of feel. All right, so once you find your oil pump drive shaft, you need to kind of very carefully turn your screwdriver until your screwdriver drops into the slot. And you gotta wiggle it around because you can't see. On an engine where you have direct line of sight into the distributor bore, it's much more simple to do this. So there we are, we're engaged. Now I'm gonna pull back out and see the orientation of my screwdriver again. And I'm at like 90 degrees. So I wanna turn it about there. Now we take and we line our distributor back up. Don't forget your distributor gasket. Mm. 
It's a very tight fit on this particular motor installation. Most production vehicles aren't going to be nearly this difficult. Line everything up. All right, and there we are, dropped in. Rotor's pointing at number one like it should be. Matches up with the mark on my distributor, and I'm static timed at eight degrees before top dead center. Got plenty of room to advance my distributor. And there you have it. That is the correct way to install a distributor on a small block Chevy. Though the methodology used would work on a small block Ford as well, and just about any other American domestic market V8 engine that still uses a distributor. Anyway, be kind to the next person who's going to work on this vehicle. Do it the right way. Your spark plug wires will thank you. All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed and found informative Distributor Installation 101. Please be sure to hit that like button. Hit me up in the comments to let me know what you thought of the video. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel because that helps me keep the content coming. Thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Oh, I'm just about ready to fire up this Willis pickup truck. So hopefully within another couple of days, you'll see at least a short of this thing running. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.